Is it this mic? Oh my goodness. It picked up the wrong mic. Google, you're killing me, man. You're absolutely killing me, Google. How's everyone doing anyhow? Happy happy Friday. Um it's been a it's been a journey. Um this has been a very long week for me. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I've been working pretty much every single day after work, building my um, latest side project, which I'm very excited about. It utilizes not only you know progressive web st app stuff, service workers, and client side caching, um, but it also utilizes it's uh, built on the server with Angu Angular Universal. Um, it's all component based. At all. Um, just having a good time building it uh and it's so fun it's so fun sort of being the master of your own domain on like a real project where you're like hey you know what i want to do i want to change the scroll bar like it, it's the little things that really like i have never had a requirement at a company and let me tell you i've got a lot of dumb requirements before where i've never had a requirement at a company be like, i need that scroll bar change change that scroll bar for me dylan um and so, like, some things you just don't learn unless you go out of your way. And so I changed the scroll bar on my application. And you know what? It looks like fire. It's baller. It looks great. <laughs> and I'm going to make it better. Um, but, yeah, man, it's been um, it's been fun working on the side projects. So that's what I've been uh, doing lately. Apparently, my, uh, my falsy values video that went out, uh, so I accidentally sped it up, so I sound like Donald Duck in it as I was doing my uh, video. I'll leave that out there for you guys to let you have some fun with it. But um, how's everyone doing, man? Let me get a water. I'm a little, a little thirsty. Also, my girlfriend damn near cut my dog's toe off earlier. So uh, <laughs> um, I thought we were going to have to go to the vet. Um, I even told my boss, uh, like, oh, hey. Um, I gotta go, I gotta take my dog to the vet because my dog's toe is bleeding all over the place because she went to clip the nails, cut it too, cut it too deep, and so the dog was bleeding profusely. There's little bloody paw prints, puppy paw prints all over the place. Uh, so that was um, interesting. Um, but. Yeah, man, I've been loving building it. I think we have almost 40 hours live stream building it. That's pretty nutty. Um, someone showed up to the live stream and asked me, how long do you think, how, ma how many hours do you think before you release it? And I said, I think not counting the time it's going to count to film 500 videos, which is a rough estimate. 150 hours, 120 alone. What does the app do? It's a video documentation site. Think like... Think of an early stage W3 schools that looks a lot better, is much faster, is a progressive web app, and its main selling point is that there's videos. So it's a it's called videodevdocs.com. That's the that's the URL that'll be up at. Um, so I'm good, man. I'm I'm good. I'm feeling pretty good. The weekend's here. This was a rough week for me, um, but I I'm here. I've been enjoying working on my, my web app, um, and uh, it's been fun, man. I've taken a, uh, a desktop first approach with it because it's for developers. But one thing I have to go back is I have to go back through the app, and I have to um, I have to make it a, a mobile view. I don't know if we'll do a tablet view. We'll just have desktop and mobile, and um, tablet will just shrink a little bit more. <laughs> But it's been a lot of fun. Um, and I put a lot of videos out these couple weeks. Dude, I've been hacking this thing out. It's fully tested. I shouldn't say fully. 85% test coverage. I ran it the other day. Um, yeah, I've been doing my best to, to test it as I go through. It's got about 80 to 85% test coverage. It's looking solid, looking good does what it needs to do um we're getting to the point now where we have to wrap some things up on the front end but i think we honestly just have to i have to uh so this weekend i got a couple tasks to do with it one i have to get some resources made some animations for the video portions uh one for the website to make it like like oh hey 
did you know this video is on videodevdocs.com? Did you? Because I have my logo everywhere. Did you? <laughs> uh, one that just sort of has who the author is. In this case, it's me. A little bit of self-promotion. And this isn't going to be like a slide or a screen. I don't really want the, there to be an intro or an outro. I want to just jump into it like that. And uh, all it is is like a little banner that takes up 10% of the screen in the bottom right. Slides in, videodevdocs.com, or more at videodevdocs.com, little logo, little text. And then something slides out, and then it says, your boy, Dylan Israel. Probably won't say your boy, but I will say deal in Israel. Um, that's what I, I wanted to do. Um, so, um, yeah, it was a, it's been a good week. I also have to, um, I had a, uh, something I'm very excited about is I had a phone call with LinkedIn Learning this week about putting some content on their platform and making some content for them, which is pretty cool. Um, shout out to Kyle Simpson, the OG JavaScript man himself, who um, connected me. I was having trouble uh, getting a hold of people at LinkedIn Learning. I'd applied a couple times over the last six months. And I didn't even get a response. And I posted, I posted on um, LinkedIn saying, hey, can anyone help connect me with LinkedIn Learning? I've been unable to get a hold of anybody and Kyle Simpson said, Hey man, uh, you think you can hook, hook Dylan up? He didn't say hook Dylan up, but, he, <laughs> but he, he, that's essentially what he did. And I got the meeting and, um, that's pretty sweet of him. man. it's always good to see somebody, um, who, uh, you're a fan of and hooks you up like that. And it's appreciated. All right. So, um, you know, shout out, shout out to Kyle. Go to KS. Um, uh, but yeah, man. So that 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 was really nice of him, um, uh, which is cool. Um, but uh, yeah, so that was exciting this week. Um, April is doing the prep work to go into. Uh, she's doing Lambda School, uh, so she is uh, doing all. She got accepted. She's doing the prep work right now. She's um, working at it every single day. Things are starting to click. Do I think investing in GraphQL is worth it? Um, well, I so it depends on what you're going for. If there's jobs that utilize GraphQL, here's here's the thing: is um, what you have to understand are fundamentals. So all GraphQL is, once you understand basically the fundamentals of what it's doing, is a query language on the front end that connects to something on the back end that accepts that query language. So when you say invest in GraphQL, are you talking about building an API that works with GraphQL? Or are you talking about just utilizing it on the front end to work with GraphQL? Um, but you can probably learn how to write a query on the front end relatively easily that goes to the, the back end as long as you just understand what it is you're trying to do. Um, what is after zeroing out your debt and having a six month nest egg? So, okay, so our storms, if I remember correctly, uh, just got his first dev job not too long ago and I was giving him some advice. So in my case, when April met me, and I've said this story quite a many, many times, I was delivering pizzas and I was working at school, uh, going to school and I um, was making $12,000 a year. Big baller, right? Uh, Le LeVar Ball, big baller brand. Um, so um, so what I've been um, – what I've been um, – uh, what I – you know, nowadays, fast forward, um, I'll clear from my job around 130. So we're talking about – 12x or 11x my income and that doesn't count side projects and passive incomes and so what i was saying is you guys who are transitioning like some of you transitioning from different careers so the jump's not going to be as much but um we had somebody on here the other day who went from being a dishwasher to a developer and 4x their income so my advice to you because the what the majority of people do and this is this is not a knock on anyone in here in general. The majority of what Americans do is they say, oh, great. I got more money. Let's increase my lifestyle. 
And before you know it, you're just as broke, except you have slightly more stuff that doesn't really do you all that much good because now you're still stressed about money. So the very first thing you always do is pay off all your debt, um, all debt. You don't know. You no longer pay interest to people. People pay interest to you. This is where we're going. You're not there yet, but this is where you're going. So you pay off your debt and then you have your nest egg. You have, a, you have some money because bad things in life happen. Bad things in life happen. You get laid off. I'm a coded guy. I got laid off. All right. Just, <laughs> uh, medical things happen. You know, Murphy's law is probably the only universal one. All right. So bad stuff happens. So you have to have that nest egg. After that, it's a couple different things. You could start saving for a house. Now, early on in your career, I wouldn't recommend saving for a house. I wouldn't recommend buying a house. I'd recommend saving, but I wouldn't recommend buying a house. The reason for it is, statistically speaking, your first couple job hubs, you should ha happen as quick as you can, two or three, um, because you're going to get the largest pay bumps. It's just that simple. So what do you do? Well, you put your, you keep your three to six month nest egg in a something that can be something that can be um, be easily accessed in a week. So I keep about three thousand um, dollars in three to five thousand dollars in my nest egg, and I keep other money in other investments. The reason I only keep about five thousand dollars in my my nest egg, even though six months I'd probably need like ten, um, is because. There's nothing in this moment that would ever cost me more than five thousand dollars that I would need that I would need immediately. And so after that, I put it into investment accounts. Um, simple things could be Acorns. If you don't know what you're gonna do, put it in an Acorns Robo Investor. If you don't know what you're gonna do, um, put it in some Robinhood stocks. Just start buying stocks that you think are good and and that are blue chip stocks. Blue chip stocks would be like S and P five hundred companies. Um, Things that are going to earn you interest. Now, when you get to that point, what you need to start doing is breaking out your paychecks before you ever, before you, the money ever touches you. This is going to, this is one of the proven things that I've done. Countless other people who have worked their first few dev jobs realize that in the last three years, they made, you know, you know four years, they made $350,000 and they don't even have a paid off car and they're like, where did it all go? It's because they have a single bank account. So open up another bank account that is solely for investing. And so what you're going to do is when your paycheck comes, you're going to do one thing. So after you save your six month nest egg, if your work does a 401k, if your work does a 401k, you're going to go and you're going to at least get the match, get the match. Um, so, if they do a 6% match, you're, you're doing 6% into that 401k. And you're just going to carry that over as you go. Now, after that, in that second account, you're going to put 25% of your income. 25% of your check goes into an investment account. That investment account can go into various things. It could just, hey, if you just want to stockpile money for a house because you're worried about the market, fine. It's not money you spend. This is money that is there to go and make more money. That's the whole point of this 25%. The 75% you live on, the 25%, one in four dollars that you get after, and by the way, this is 100% we're talking about after you do your after your benefits, after your 401k match, bare minimum. So the 25%, that is your investment money. So you need to keep your cost of living down to the point where you can invest at least, at least 25%. And now what's going to happen is, let's say you start at 50000 after taxes, 401k, you get like $35,000. Um, so you're going to have $8,000 that are going to be invested roughly by the end of the year. <laughs> um, that $8,000, if it earns what the stock market's been earning, it's around 10% a year uh, for the last year, easy. Is now going to be eighty eight hundred dollars, and then it's going to you know continue growing. You're going to continue this pattern of living below your means. So. That would be what I would do next is find ways to invest money. If you don't know, do the simplest thing. And you're saying, Dylan, I'm so worried about losing money. You're losing money by not investing money. And let me tell you, I've lost plenty of money investing into things, but I tried them. Why my income was just going that has no impact on me today. And part of that idea is you just need to get comfortable with money. You need to get comfortable with investing, but you definitely have to break out two bank accounts. And when your income gets higher and you're saying, look, I don't really look at all these taxes. 
you might get to a point where you want to max out your 401k. I'm at that point right now where after I buy an investment property, because that's the next big thing for me, is I'm putting money in stocks. I'm putting money here and there. I want to buy an investment property. And after that, I'm going to be maxing out my 401k because I pay so much in taxes. I'd rather get the tax write-offs now and build up my retirement and not have to worry about it. That so, But after the six months, obviously do your 401k match if you have it. Um, and then start taking that 25%, one in $4 that you get post-tax and do that. So... <coughs> Okay. Um, can I make my live video app uh, more detailed? Dude, by the time I'm live streaming me building a web application, I've gotten done. I get up and sit. <laughs> let, let this sink in of how hard I'm grinding real quick. Let that sink in. I get up at 6 o'clock every single day. I'm on the road to work by 6.30 on the days I go in. If I don't go into work, at, which I work three days remote, if I don't go into the office at 6.30 to 7.30, because I start at 7.30, I'm spending an hour on YouTube, on a course, on um, learning, whatever it is, on, on my web app. I'm spending an hour. I then work from approximately 7.30 to 4 to 4.30, sometimes 5, depending on um, if something comes up. After that, I come home. I drive home on the weekdays. I'm home by 5, home by 5.30. I have lunch or I have dinner with my girlfriend. I say hi to my dogs. Around 6.30 or 7, I'm on my computer, and I put in two hours of coding time into a side project that I'm absolutely infatuated with. But by that time, my brain and my mouth are tired. I do my best to explain it as I go, but I <laughs> it's I can't promise to give because it's unplanned and it's a very detailed thing. So how can and and it's not meant for amateurs. I am building a production level application that is a progressive web app that has client side caching. So it has an online offload mode, online offline mode it, that has lazy loaded routes that is custom in every single way. It's going to be connected to multiple, multiple APIs that has services, um, models, testing. We're utilizing um, things, the solid principles, dependency inversion, all these sorts of things to build a production level app and testing. Um, I do my best. I, I, uh, I do my best to make it as explanatory as possible, but these live streams are hopefully you pick something up and hopefully you do something. And, but you can see the goal here is to see what it actually takes to build a production level application and ship it and have it be successful. And someone asked me, I told him 150 hours. We're about 40 hours in on stream, probably did about 10 off. A lot of that's like doing the design, um, uh, doing the um, do, hiring the the UI UX every night. And and by the way, every night I get done doing that two hour live stream where I'm working it out. Every time, I am. Every single time, I hop on a call with Ricky and we talk about UI UX changes that need to happen the next day. So if you're there during the live stream, I happily will explain it to you. Someone, someone yesterday asked, how do I do a smooth scroll? Cool, I'll show you real quick. No problem. I already implemented it into my application. But yeah, man, I, I, I do my best. Um, April, hey, by the way, April gets upset with me for the same thing. Because I can grind like you would not believe. You want... If my boss came up to me and he said, we need you to work the next 70 hours straight to get this done, but we're going to pay you for every 70 hours. And after eight, we're giving you time and a half. I'll knock it out. Don't you worry. 
don't you worry. It will be there. It will be tested. It will be good to go. And then you won't see me for about two weeks because I'm going to go to sleep. And, but I can grind. I got no problem with that. That's the reason that I can go from 6.30 in the morning with a 45-minute break to eat, watch three YouTube videos, and then hop back on here Monday through Friday. And on the weekends, I, I do a little bit less because I actually do need time. So April gets upset with me because by the time I get home and I do my thing, I haven't really said anything to her. And when we're together, I am so drained. I do a lot of grunting. I, she's like, what do you think about this? Like, eh. uh, what, <laughs> um, because this is what it takes to be successful. This is what it takes to go and accomplish your goals. This is what it takes. It takes hard work. It takes dedication. And you know what? In a couple of years, I will have children. In a couple of years, I will probably be taking care of a family member of mine, my mom or my dad or whatever. Or, you know, this is what it takes. It takes hard work. It takes dedication. And when you're doing live streams after you've already put in 10 hours in a day um, and you're doing them very well, I'm delivering I am delivering a quality product. I'm more worried about delivering a quality product and and showcasing nice things than I am about me grunting and sort of going through my words. Uh, but that's what you have to you have to say. Sometimes you lose out on some of the social dynamics. Um, you're lucky. I just I got I I don't smell. You should probably with that. You know, anyhow, um, I'm a freelancer. I've been in talks with a potential client today. However, he doesn't want to pay for the onboarding process and setup. Only wants to pay once I'm logging time into Jira. Get out of there. Uh, that's just a bad client. You don't want to deal with him. What's smooth scroll? Smooth scroll is where uh, you know if you were to do a local reference with like an ID and it jumps to it. Smooth scroll smoothly scrolls to it. Your salary, no one's going to pay you overtime. Yeah. Um, and I'm not going to work overtime. So, uh, Time to calm down over there, Austin. What's my advice if you're working with, if they're working with Java Spring and you're doing HTML CSS? Um, it's going to be hard, man. Java is one of those languages that's taught in computer science programs. Um, and so um, you know, you're mainly going to be dealing with uh, a lot of a lot of computer science grads, which is where it's a little bit harder because that then you deal with a lot of um, is it here's a here's a term here's something I was a little bit upset that they didn't accept me for this teaching role that I was completely overqualified for and should have gotten for this weekend uh, boot camp over summer that I was assumed I was a sure win and they said that my technical abilities I was great but they didn't pass on me for some reason April thinks it's because I don't have a degree uh, and it's education based and they didn't realize it they were just stunned by how fabulous my resume is and they forgot about the degree thing till they actually got to the after the final interview um is that bigotry is that <laughs> is it is it bigotry to to turn down a qualified candidate who could easily teach easily teach an html css javascript course As a matter of fact has hundreds of videos doing so um is a senior level developer teaches and mentors people on udemy scrimba YouTube, uh, is it is it bigotry? Because I'm starting to think that they're discriminating against me because I don't have a bachelor's degree. That I'm feeling discriminated against if that's the case. Um, thank you, uh, Kaskish. Um, is there any way to make money without getting a, into a job? Yeah, I mean, you can. the The easiest thing is ad revenue. Uh, not easiest, but one the common thing to do is ad revenue. Build a website, build a web app that people are going to use and and generate. I just bought a, a website the other day, a URL, um, and I think it's going to make me a lot of money once I get around to it. 
it's something I'm very passionate about. Uh, finish up a master's degree in software engineering, totally worthless. If I could do it over, I'd follow your path down. It's so funny you say that, Philip, because in the 2019 hacker rank thing that I shared, they had a question on there with like 10,000 devs where for the people who went and got their masters, only one in four thought it was it paid off for them. But that's what I'm saying. All job in interviews are discriminatory, but is it legit chip discrimination if you can do the job? I'm literally a professional whose my entire job is to do HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and I have educational materials proving that. I've mentored and I've volunteered at at um, elementary schools to teach kids and, and talk about STEM. Welcome to the world of being discriminated against. I look, I'm used to being discriminated. Go and <laughs> go and look at a three thousand square foot house, brand new house, and flip flops, a gaming shirt with a hole, and some um, some like gym shorts with cat scratches on them, and see how how discriminated against you are. Where they just blatantly ask you how much money you make and what you do for a living to see if it's worth their time to show you the house or not. That. That's a real thing. And you have a car and you have a car because you're fiscally conservative that you're not going to go and put new hubcaps on because all four of them got lost. <laughs> yeah. With a real estate agent, no less. So. Yeah, man. Shame. Shame on anybody. Um it's part of the game, though. But that's the thing. That here, here, here's what you have to remember. Here's what you have to remember is, you know, it's only because you're playing their game. It's only because it's only because they're the house and you're not. So what you have to understand is that at the end of the day. Go and build your house. Go and build your passive income streams. Go and build your revenue streams. Go and keep doing that. And you'll don't be dependent on anybody else. That's the one thing that I've seen eat away at people is they get dependent on companies. They get dependent on other people's for a paycheck. And I am without a doubt, but I'm trying not to be. And if it came down to it, if I lost my job today for whatever reason, I've set myself up financially with money in the bank, with passive income streams that I could at least be okay. Yeah. Um, what's going on, Jose? Uh, I've done some projects, but wasn't using GitHub to store their progress. Was looking to start applying soon. How screwed am I? Um, just put them on there. Just start putting them on there. You're not screwed. Just start putting them on there. Start doing correct things today because tomorrow will always come. So the sooner you do it today, the better tomorrow is. What's your Twitch channel? I live stream on YouTube, man. Just If you go to my homepage, there's 18 videos of me building this application from start to where we are today. Is my long-term goal to YouTube, do YouTube full-time? No. Um, I've never, ever wanted to do YouTube full-time. Um, I have wanted to... My So what I want to do is I want to build courses. What I want to do is I want to talk about software. What I want to do... Um, uh, I want to build web applications that make me enough money to survive. So I want to build things that just generate income and that build a project. And there's a couple of businesses that I want to start that I, I think would be pretty cool. That's what I want to do. But I've never wanted to exclusively be a YouTuber. Um, what I'd like to do is just educate people to do better for themselves and their lives and, um, and uh, be able to have the same level of success I've achieved in a relatively short amount of time. So you can change your life too. 
Does it matter what type of laptop you start React on? No, JavaScript is a single threaded language. It doesn't matter what you do. Now, depending on if you're running Docker or your build tools or things like that, it's gonna go a little bit slower, but no, it doesn't really matter. Basically, you wanna be a teacher? Yeah, um, I would love to be a teacher. Uh, matter of fact, I would, I would go and actually probably take a pay cut to be a teacher. Um, not much of a pay cut, but uh, as I build up my passive income streams pay cut, but I can't because I don't have a degree. And I have no, <laughs> I, you know, I, I, I get calls from recruiters all the time, right? So I've, I take them to see what's going on. Hey, good opportunity. Let me listen. Um, and the guy's talking to me about the benefits. He's like, yeah, and you could go back to get your degree. I was like, <laughs> I told, I don't, this is probably a little bit too much information for a recruiter. I wouldn't say saying this. I told him, I was like, not only would would the company have to pay for my degree, they would have to guarantee me a $50,000 raise for me ever to go back to college. <laughs> so I have no plans of ever, ever continuing my traditional education. I will always continue my education, but I will never, ever, ever go back and, con and do a college education. How's it going? I'm good, man. I'm uh, I'm looking forward to the weekend. Um, how long did it take you to master your profession? I don't know, man. I I, I Matt, the profession, especially in the front, is always changing. So if you ever think that you've mastered it, you're gonna stop learning. You're gonna stop growing. Um, so I try not to think of that that way. Yeah, yeah, I, I get that I'm teaching people. And like when I sell myself with companies and interviews, you know, I, I say that I've taught and mentored hundreds of thousands and millions of people, right? Because statistically it's true between all the platforms I've taught on. Um, so yeah, there, there are some, you know, that's true. But what I'm saying is that I'd like to physically, like I'd like that to be my full-time job. So how I'm going to get there, how I'm going to go and and do courses, I like to physically do that, is I'm going to build passive income streams. I'm going to continue to learn and continue to grow. And how I'm going to do that is surrounding myself with good developers and to learn from them and grow from them. Do you think JavaScript difficulty is all hype? I think a lot of people are trying to... Um, so this is more of a, this isn't a JavaScript thing. This is more of a code thing. And I think a lot of people see people going to boot camps in three months and hearing how they're changing their lives and thinking. So whenever there's a good opportunity, there's a lot of people who see it as a get rich quick scheme and don't put the effort and energy in. And that's my thought on it, on it is that at the end of the day, you have 50% of people who have hit rock bottom or like just ready for a change and they're going to put the time, effort and energy in. And they understand that that certificate doesn't do anything for you. It's the learning process. It's the growing process. It's the networking and it's the continuation of that boot camp in your own time. And then you have the other 50% of the people who just think they have to show up for three months, pay for it, barely get the certificate and somehow they're going to get a job and they don't. And that's the same thing with people who are trying to learn code. They think they can put in one hour a week. They think they can put in, two hours or go one day a week it's consistency it's every day until you have a job that is it april's learning code right now and she's been taking it seriously for about about three four weeks every single day every single day so and it's starting to click she was talking she was talking to me this morning she, I've interviewed senior level developers who I could, you could ask them, what's the difference between an argument and a parameter? And they would not be able to tell you. She told me today what it was, and I was thoroughly impressed by her. Or maybe it was yesterday. What's she learning and where she's doing the pre uh, coursework for? So she started doing the Code Academy and Free Code Camp. She's doing pre coursework right now for um, Lambda School. Uh, Dylan, sometimes I feel like doing just HTML and CSS, and some days I want to do just JavaScript. Is that bad? 
No. It's part of it. You're always going to be doing a little bit of both. It's hard to believe. Believe it. <laughs> and that's not to say that you can't get things wrong. I interviewed I interviewed uh uh before I got this PWC job and I got <laughs> I got um I got asked the same question I got asked a year and a half ago and I got it wrong twice in a row. And it's I I just need to memorize this question because it, it's something that's come up actually I think three times in three different interviews. And it's set, it's you set a set timeout in the it, I just have to understand set timeout better because because I honestly have used it once in my entire life. Typically, you want to avoid set timeouts for a couple reasons. One, um, there's very few reasons you ever need to use them. Two, if you ever want to compile your app server site, it's going to delay it or it could and cause issues. And three, why? Typically, people who are using set timeouts, it's because some part of their app, they're trying to hack it to work because they're not managing the DOM state properly. Yeah. So, but it's a question that gets asked, so I just need to memorize it. I honestly, I understand the functionality of set timeout for the most part. I just keep getting this particular question wrong um yeah it's okay um i've just avoided is she doing the whole lambda boot camp yeah so she's doing the prep work right now but she's already got approved uh so basically the way their process works as she's explained it to me is that you apply they then approve you, but uh, it's conditional upon you doing the prep work, then taking a skills assessment. I see use the set timeout op, uh, to make a button spin, have a loader spinner when you click it, so the app looks like it's doing some serious number crunching. Well, Jason, might I suggest you just use a CSS animation? Because that's all that is. <laughs> Um, all that is is adding a class or an animation to your to your application, and it doesn't really require you to do any JavaScript processing. And that's what I'm saying. You're using it to simulate something, but all you'd have to do is is set an animation. Although that 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 is a, a less common scenario. Most of the time, it's like, hey, this isn't working, and so I need to delay the DOM. I need to delay it so that it works with the DOM. And it's like, God, don't do that. You're just setting yourself up for headache. But yeah, I need to, I need to um, it's just one of those items that I don't use, so I haven't touched too much. Um, Hey, Jeremy. How's it going, man? I wonder if I should live stream tonight. I kind of want to work on the app after this, but I'm, I can feel myself getting a little sleepy, and I'm wondering if I should get a coffee. Because... I should. How is Tampa compared to L.A.? Well, I bought a house out here. I would never have been able to do that in L.A. Um... That's what I'm saying. You could do a splat. Here's the thing, guys. Everything you're saying for using a set timeout with a splash screen, these are all animations. You set a time with your animation to add a class, and it will do it. Um, these are all hacky ways to avoid getting better at CSS and animations and increase JavaScript thread processing that you don't need to do. Take April to Darren if you have an app. I'm broke, dog. I ain't got time for that. I actually did just buy, a, got on sale, a Roomba vacuum with a mop to keep our tiles clean. Just put a little water in it, ping it. I got it for 100 bucks on sale. I was pretty happy about that. Um, now, we're, uh, we're going to be... Um, so I'm flying her sister and her boyfriend out here. 
um, for uh, it's so funny. Um, so uh, I don't God, I this might even been pre YouTube channel. So um, falling on a budget. Yeah, I'm not broke. I, April. That's the one thing April hates me saying is that we're broke. But I, I, I say it all the time so she doesn't spend money, and it drives her nuts. I'm like, no, nah, baby, we're broke. She's like, we're not broke. I know how much money you make, and we rent two of our rooms, so we pay $600 in rent. And in total, you take home about nine to $10,000 with everything together. We're not broke. And I was like, no, nah, baby, we broke. We broke as shit. <laughs> I got, we ain't got no money, baby. Um so she's always, she's always, she hates that. She hates it. But I, we're broke, you know. <laughs> we're broke. All right. Um, ain't got no money. No money. We we broke. All right. That's. Um, <laughs> uh, that's why I'm always working, dog. <laughs> Cause we broke. Ain't got no money. Look at that. That's our bed. April and I share that. That's crazy, right? Um, no. <laughs> um, but yeah, so... Um, so, um, things obviously have uh, gotten much better since, um, since, like, pizza delivery days. But her... Um, her sister, I'm flying her and her boyfriend out here to come see us, right? And um, I, I've talked about this a couple times. We took her in when April was the one making all the money, which was like $13 an hour or $14 an hour and supporting us as I was in school and whatnot. And um, we had to give up our room because we took her in and like legally through like the adoption process and whatnot. Um, April and I slept in the living room together in this tiny, shitty-ass crack house that we were running. Um, and um, uh, things have gotten much better since then, but she's never come out here, seen the house, sort of see our different sort of very different lifestyle, like, and sort of, uh, I think it's going to stun her a little bit. Uh, <laughs> she's like, what happened to Dylan, who was playing League of Legends in his underwear in the living room, like at 22, <laughs> compared to like Dylan nowadays, who like, you know, we're gonna we're yeah. I, I started the story to tell you we're going out to dinner a couple times in about two weeks when they get here. Um, but if you haven't done it and you're willing to treat yourself, you got the money to. I'd highly recommend that you check out Rodizio. It is um, it's a, a Brazilian steakhouse. But if you've never gone to a Brazilian steakhouse, treat yourself to a Brazilian steakhouse. They come with slabs of meat and they saw it off. You eat. You keep getting different ones, like 20, 30 different meats. I'm not saying do it daily. It's definitely not healthy. It's delicious though. Um, but we don't we we do not do that too often because we broke. All right. <laughs> All right. We broke. Um, but no, seriously, we broke. Uh, we broke because we invest in our money, and I pay down uh, the principal on our house and all that sort of stuff. Um, I suck at JavaScript challenges. Any tips to improve it? Yeah. So the one thing that I think would really help you, and it's not just because I want your 999 using coupon code coding God to get the 100 algorithm challenge, but I ch highly think the 100 algorithm challenge, which there's 100 JavaScript challenges for you to go and practice and see me walk through and use the methods that are available. I encourage you to check it out. There's a link in the description. But just that repetition, that daily repetition, that practice, that's a good place to start. Do you think a military reservist career and a developer career can coincide? Um, I don't know why you'd want to be in the the reserves of the military as a and a developer. You're better off taking that time that you would have put in the reserves and building something else. From a financial standpoint, if that's just something you're very passionate about, um, I think it can coincide. But that that's something that's gonna do for you. Thank you, Nepcap. Um, How deep do you dive in your t into your technical interviews? Uh, when I'm interviewing somebody or when I'm being interviewed, what do you mean, in my course? 
You play League of Legends? Not anymore. I watch, so I watch the League of Legends. So one of the few hobbies I have is I watch MMA and I watch um, League of Legends uh, uh, esports. So on the weekends, I have it on the TV all the time, 24-7 downstairs for the LCS. And what I do is I typically, uh, what I, you know how they have like all that, build up like if you've ever watched uh league of legends they talk for like 30 minutes in between games and then there's like 20 minutes of champion select so i'll watch the game and then i'll I'll go and i'll leave at the end of the game and then i'll for about 50 minutes i'll work on something or when i'm good i'll go down i'll jump in about five ten minutes i'll continue watching it uh what champions oh god uh so i primarily play top and mid so i really like karthus garen Nasus, um, Darius, I'm trying to think, Cassidin. Um, the highest I ever got was like Plat 2 um, in terms of ranked, but I, I played uh, from like Season 2 to like Season 5 or 6, um, pretty much all the way up until I became a developer. So I haven't really played for the last three years. Um, I just have other things I want to spend my time on right now. Um, but I, uh, I've always really liked League. I went to the Season 2 World Finals uh, when I was in Los Angeles, and I used to go all the time. I probably went maybe five, six times with April to the um, League Championship Series, like the normal games. We also went to the Season 3 Semifinals. Um, yeah, it was always fun. Wife is kicking me out, so I might be in a crack house soon. What, what happened, man? That's no good. How did you get this story they're discussing your underwear? Let me see. Am I might. <laughs> you want, do I have an embarrassing photo up here? No, let me, one second. I don't mind putting myself on blast if it's funny. You guys think I'm joking. I got a photo somewhere. You ain't ready for this. All right. You think I'm kidding? You think I'm you think I'm kidding about sitting there playing? So, all right, let's paint the scene real quick. Let's paint the scene. College Dylan, college, college Dylan. There's no AC in this apartment. It's completely overpriced. We're sweating. We're dying. So, but you got. I'm I'm trying to relax, trying to play games. So you got the screen door open. But like, look at that! Look at that hotness right there. Playing the League of Legends. You see that? I'm not kidding. You think I was kidding? April took a picture of this because she thought it was so ridiculous. I'm not bullshitting you. I preach you the truth, man. Grinding. <laughs> Grinding to that plat too in the middle of summer, man. Oh, my goodness. Um... You in crypto? I, I have some crypto. Not Not that much. Should I go after a software engineering degree or a boot camp? Uh, really depends on what you're trying to do, man. But uh, I always recommend self-taught and boot camp. Um, your job out west that you left after three days uh, said it wouldn't make you better. Dev, any chance you can explain more? Yeah. Um, without going into too much detail, the processes were poor. The uh, code was poor. The excuses were the most upsetting. The clear lack of understanding of software principles. Um, really just, the, it's been very seldom I've ever worked on a team or talked with somebody and looked into an application in which there was a, not a single thing of quality. Um, and having seen some of those red flags, it's hard to, um, hard to stay. Um, What do you think the odds are coming allowing me to work part-time until I graduate in December? Uh, if it's the right company, you just got to find the right, right role, but it's it's going to be harder than, than not. What I would say for you is work full-time and go to school part-time because aren't you going to – so here's a crazy thought. Aren't you going to college to get a good job? So if you get a good job before you graduate college, why not just put college on the part-time because you've already accomplished the goal? If you get to the if you get to your destination before the expected end of the journey, you don't continue the journey 
maybe at the same pace. Like that's the idea. <laughs> What's my favorite favorite team? TSM. <laughs> um, yeah, man, I, I've always liked TSM. Although I, I cheer for Team Liquid, it's hard not to it's hard not to cheer for the the the, um, the teams who are killing it, right? Um, Double lift over there, flexing on fools. I, I like I like I like his attitude. Robbie or Colby? Um, dude, I know Robbie Lawler technically lost his last fight, but <laughs> but he murked. He murked. I mean, he didn't he didn't Jorge Masvidal murk. Um, Home, homeboy, I'm forgetting his name right now. Um, I'm forgetting his name. Jorge took him out of existence. That's why I don't remember his name. But but he looked, but Robbie Lawler looked like Ben Askren. Thank you. Uh, Robbie Lawler looked like he he, he gave him the 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 three piece and the soda. You know what I'm saying? The bar from Jorge. Um, but um, I don't know, man. Colby's got good cardio. It's it's hard to say because I don't think anybody actually likes Colby. Like April has grown on, so April watches the MMA and we watch like MMA news. And like Colby is so silly that he's kind of grown on us as a as a competitor, and he does have good cardio. But I I think Robbie Lawler, like Colby's gonna dry hump a decision out, but Robbie Lawler if is gonna he's gonna finish it. Um, so I'm rooting for Robbie. Who's gonna be? Probably Colby, just go, but I want Robbie Lawler to go for it. Practice Fortnite? I wish, man. I actually, so I don't even, I'm not even interested in Fortnite. Like, I like the whole, like, survival games, but I, I have no interest in, in the building mechanic on there. It just looks obnoxious. You got to warn people for showing those picks? Hey. <laughs> I should put that I should just change that on my uh, YouTube channel. I'm currently attending Sunny Poly Polytechnic and for a group project we created our own product but my partner's claiming he did all the work and I'm at risk of losing my academic scholarship. What do I do? Do you have emails? Do you have documentation? Do you have a GitHub repo that can show that you've committed code to this application? There should be some sort of paper trail in software. Simply prove the paper trail and get this guy booted himself for um, academic dishonesty because it's dishonest to accuse you of not doing anything if you did something. But I'm guessing that you didn't do shit because no one goes out of their way in college just to show somebody under the radar and so what probably happened is this guy did 95% and you did 5%. You showed up at the beginning, you showed up at the end. We all know we all know that type of person. I was in college enough enough to know what type of person shows up. Show up at the beginning, show up at the end. Um And yeah, no. And you might be right about Robbie. I don't I don't know, man, but I've followed the paper trail. I'm just giving you a hard time. What's the best way to learn React? Build a component library. Do I think LA's dev market is saturated? Yeah. When I was applying for jobs and I wanted to become a developer, I the hardest thing that would happen is I would be going against 300 applicants on that first day. When I decided to apply outside of LA, I'd be going against five. So here's the thing. We've been beefing over a girl for a while now. I think this is his way of trying to get back at me. So explain the situation. It's going to be awkward. What's wrong with people, man? Um, but yeah, in those big cities, it's going to be hard for you to get that first role. How to differentiate yourself from... Uh, from 95,000 other applicants for the same job? Well, there's projects. There's um, unique projects, I should say. There are certificates. That's all you need. Those two things. Generate your own work experience. 
That's what you need to do. That's it, man. Just generate your own work experience. Except for Philly. No one ever talks about Philly. Everyone goes to New York City. Dude, you couldn't pay me enough. I got I got a call from a recruiter the other day, and he's like, hey, would you be interested in going to San Francisco? I said, can you pay me a quarter million dollars? He's like, I think we could get you around like 170 I said, no. <laughs> like, I don't even want to have this conversation if we're not starting at a quarter million dollars to go to New York or to San Francisco. San Francisco is the most expensive place in the country for a one bedroom apartment that costs $4,000. We're not even having a conversation if we're not starting at a quarter million dollars. Don't even want it. No, I'm good. Is it realistic for a junior developer to get a back end role? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and I know a lot of people who work in um, New York. They make like 180, and it's like, why? <laughs> you get you go anywhere else and make 90, and and uh, you just want to live in New York. You're caught up in that. Uh, your experience viewing applicants' portfolios. Would you say they were good, competent, or above average? So by the time you reach me, um, every company I've ever worked at, um. They, uh, they've already been filtered. So by the time, by the time I interview you for a senior level role, um, I don't look at your portfolio. I looked at your LinkedIn, LinkedIn. I looked at your, I look at your resume and a lot of senior developers don't even have portfolio sites. Um, it's more of a junior developer thing, oddly enough. Um, but so, um, I, and part of, part of that reason is I, I like to see your experience. Uh, I typically will ask you, speak to your experience, and then I will ask you the same 20 questions I ask every other candidate. The reason I do this, and I'll, I'll ask follow-up questions depending on which so which direction a candidate goes. So like on the team I'm currently on, we're okay if you're strong in the back end but poor on the front end or strong in the front end but poor on the back end because we can, we can supplement each one of these. So – um, you know, this is one of those items where it's just a, okay, you don't know the front end. Great. I'll focus on the back. You don't know the back end. Great. I'll focus on the front end. Let's see how good you are and see if you excel in one of these areas. But I will ask you the same questions. And as I go and I, I give you, I get your answers. There's certain things you can't get wrong. There's just certain things that if you get it wrong, I don't care. I don't care how right everything else was. I'm, I'm going to recommend that it ends. And I also point them how well they got through it to have a general idea. Okay, I asked the same 20 questions. Responsive web design JavaScript. Um, are those 20 questions in my Udemy course? Yes, the majority of them are. Um, yes. The hardest problem I had to work on in a job, I got asked this the, the other day, and the honest to God answer is nothing's ever been all that hard. Um, web development, front end development is no longer hard for me. Um, and it's it's strange to say that, and I, I don't say it to be arrogant. I don't say it to, to be like, oh, dude, I'm the best. I'm, I can do anything. Um, it's just to say that I can build whatever you need um, when it comes to front-end development. I haven't struggled with really much. Um, it's not because I'm not working on interesting things. It's not because I'm building websites. Um, I build web applications with functionality, and I just know how to do it. 
and I had I had my it was, it was kind of awkward. It's always awkward when someone you're close with compliments you. At least it is for me. But I was having lunch with an old colleague of mine, and he's very content where he's at. And he's like, "Dude, I wish I could be like you." And uh, he says something along this lines of, "I wish I could. I wish I could um, you know, be as motivated as you." And like one thing that, and we were on a team together. And so we worked very close together. He's like, one thing that always, I was always really impressed by was like, they would ask you to do something. And before the meeting was over, you already knew how to do it. And I was still figuring out what they were asking. <laughs> something like that. And I was like, I, yeah, man, I just put the time in. I don't, I don't know what to say. Like, I, I, I like how many, look, I've built hundreds of components, hundreds of components. Whatever you need me to build, I can build it. That's simple. I'm not doing rocket scientists, rocket science. I'm building component libraries. I'm building web applications. I'm building e-commerce platforms. I'm building uh, internal tools. Whatever it is that you need in the front end, I can do it. Um, but I have... The closest I've come to a challenge is just new technologies. You say, hey, I need you to build a progressive web app. Okay, cool. Let me go look up service workers. Didn't know those were your thing. Week later, here you go. Client side caching. Um, how many lines of code do you think you've written so far? That's always hard to calculate. I wonder if there's a way in, is there a way in VS Code to figure out how many lines of code in your application? I'd love to know that. Oh my God, there is. Let's find this out right now. So what's this called? VS Code Counter? Dude, I, 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 I'm dying to know you guys got... So there's this thing called VS Code Counter. Let me see if it works right now. This is just in my personal project. All right, so if we – how do you open the command palette? I never use the command palette. Oh, here we go. Control-Shift-P, that's right. And we're looking for VS Code counter count lines and directory video docs. All right, so in my personal project alone <laughs> – so this project that I've only I've spent about 50 hours on and my personal project in JSON, which I don't where are they getting JSON? I wonder if that's counting the uh, let me let me do from the source folder because I think that's counting node modules. All right, so let me let me do it from here. So control shift P, because that seems like a lot of JSON. Video docs slash SRC. So from the source folder, let's see how much we got. Okay, so in the video dev docs application, that alone has 3,270 lines of JavaScript, 1,294 lines of SAS, 407 lines of HTML, and 51 lines of JSON. So if we say, and I've been working on this for about 20 days, this is a personal project. If we say that theoretically that this is a good baseline, which we'll say it's for a month, we'll say for a month, and I have approximately three years of experience, and in a month I'm averaging roughly 5,000 lines of code counting the CSS, the JavaScript, the TypeScript. So in a month at 5,000 lines of code, times 36, that's 180,000 lines of code using this as the baseline. Are your algorithms on Udemy? Yeah, the 100 algorithm challenge, man. What's a medium level front end interview question for you? Um, 
A medium level question would probably ask you about testing. How was I able to build my skills up so fast? I've been working every single day for four to five years. <laughs> hey, James donated $2. I appreciate that, man. Thank you so much. Dude, I remember, I remember my computer science teachers who made this big old speech about how much code you'd be writing in a day as a senior developer. And he's like, how much do you think? And I, I just threw out a number like 500. He's like, five to 20. I was like, bro, okay. And I was like, I know he ain't talking about web development. <laughs> five to 20 a day? I'm like, all right. Maybe you're doing five to 20. <laughs> Yeah, and by the way, this application is 183 files counting right there. What could you possibly do with 520? That's what I'm saying. There's a there's a generational difference. There's a different standard of what you'd be doing. Any reason to learn assembly language? No. <laughs> In a couple of years, start your own bootcamp. I, I don't know. I need someone to start it and just bring me in. That's like... <laughs> to be honest, though, I know where I'm weak. I'm weak in the back end. So, um, you know, what am I doing to fix that? Well, I'm diving deeper into REST. I'm diving deeper into um, back end caching. I'm building um, services that are going to be associated with this web project that I'm working on. Um Professor Dillon. What do you think about elitists with degrees who say boot camp grads and self taught aren't actual developers? I say thank you to the haters for the motivation. That's, <laughs> that's all I say. I don't think about them again. I just use them as motivation. And I'm so I'm a very big proponent of negative role models. People who I don't want to be like. People who who um, feel like it's better to bring someone down to bring them up. The only people I bring down are people who don't want to bring themselves up and are willing to stay bad. That's the thing that drives me nuts. Um, oh, I'm not going to Miami. Miami, Miami, it goes like it goes like SF, New York, Miami in terms of cost of living. Um, no, no way. I appreciate I appreciate that offer, though. But Miami is just as expensive anywhere else. Is the industry as bad as Joshua Fluke portrays it? So um, Joshua Fluke had a lot of unfortunate events. Um, he worked at startups. Uh, <laughs> and I, I highly advise against that because it's so um, volatile. And I, I advise against contract rules because they are short term and they are oftentimes you get screwed over. And that seems to be the sort of place you went. But by and large, he's not incorrect. If you do not stand up for yourself in life, and you do not stand up for yourself in choosing the best opportunities that work for you. And if you do not understand that recruiters are looking out for their best interests and not yours, then yes, you will have a horrible experience. Um, working in uh, corporate America can be a very draining thing if you let it. So you've heard me say a lot of times that, you know, I got my phone right here. You know what's not on my phone? Email. You know what's not on my phone? Um, uh, ch um, chat messaging with my work. If you want to get a hold of me, you call me like an adult to tell me that you need me to do something, and I will do it. You know how often that's happened since I've done that in the year and a half? Zero. Zero times. 
zero times has someone called me because now now it's a much harder task for you to say dylan i know you're probably spending time with your family you're having dinner you just got done working hell you're probably probably working on something that's going to make you wealthy or make you happy a side project whatever it is but i'm gonna need you to stop all that and i'm gonna tell you this on the phone it has never happened never happened and if it does i will gladly if there's an actual fire i'll gladly do it especially if i'm the root cause the root cause you ain't even gonna ask i'm, I'm going yeah dude, i'm not i'm not gonna ship something that broke and then be like yo good luck y'all <laughs> no your school's teaching assembly transfer you'd be surprised man a lot of schools i imagine are so you have to take care of yourself and this is why i'm so big on you on taking care of your finances that's why i'm so big on you understanding that companies will look out for themselves that's not to say that companies are evil that's not to say that they're just gonna shit on you because they want to no they have decisions they have to do what's best for them and people by the nature of wanting to be agreeable by the nature of wanting to go along and just liking to think that everything's gonna be okay you put yourself in a a disadvantage i've known plenty of people who have lost out on hundreds of thousands of dollars of salary because they just thought their company was going to take care of them, and they didn't. They just thought their company was paying them what the market rate was, and they're not. People who are miserable because they just don't want to deal with looking at another company. I understand that. A lot of companies suck. <laughs> a lot of, there's a lot of rough jobs out there. A lot of companies tell you they do one thing and do the opposite just to get you in there, especially because it's so hard to find a good developer. It's happened to me. I got laid off after three months, but I was prepared to handle it. I then took a job across country that said it was one thing, turned out to be something completely different, and I quit it after three days. Did they lie to me? I wouldn't go that far. Did they misrepresent what it was? Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. And to, to Eddie D's point is Joshua Fluke tell you in his story, I listened to his, his like 45 minute video, every minute of it talking about why he doesn't trust companies. will never work with them again about how he worked overtime and laid him off the next day. Yeah. Let's get real questions. Thoughts about on Taco Bell. I bought a party pack for April and I for lunch today. The um, and the dogs, I should say. Uh, so we had some. We had bean and cheese and uh, tacos today. We were running low on food. We went food shopping today, though. So no more Taco Bell. How many companies should I work for before I work for myself? When you have enough for an investment property and you have multiple investments going on in the background, where you can. Um, with the money you have saved and your passive income uh, survive for three years. That's what I would say, because you should be able to increase your, as long as you have your income good, you should be able to consistently in three years, increase your income through side projects and things like that relatively easily, not relatively easily, but when it's your full-time job uh, that you can continue to go. So that's what I would say is that when you have three years of money saved and passive incomes. So I'll give you an example, right? Um, I probably not counting equity in the house that I've paid down probably have like 30, 40 grand in, in total assets around there. Um, if I was to quit my job today, 
assuming that both these rooms stayed rented and I didn't rent another room out, <clears throat> my mortgage and my HOA is about $800 a month combined out of pocket. Um, so $800 there. We have utilities. That's about $300 in total. So that's $1,100 out the bank. Uh, car insurance, about $150 for a $1,250. Um, then we have food, miscellaneous stuff. Let's just say it's $2,000 a month for me to get by right now. That's that's pretty accurate. It's around, it's around $2,500, I think. But that's because you know we're going to dinners and we're spending money that we normally wouldn't spend. We're spending money that we wouldn't be spending if Dylan was unemployed. <laughs> uh, so it's about $2,500 for me to live. With cutbacks, with making smart decisions, we could get that down two thousand dollars. So, two thousand dollars for a year, twenty four thousand for three years, seventy two thousand. But um, right now, assuming that I have that, we'll just say, um, let's just say we have um, thirty thousand, thirty thousand dollars of assets that we could sell and 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 live off. Based off of the money I make now, I make about two thousand dollars of passive income a month around there. So you take that. We're pretty much neutral. There's no way you want to live. You don't want to live down to your last dollar. But that would be what I would say. When you're ready to work for yourself is when you have enough semi-passive income that $30,000 can last you three years because you have additional revenue streams coming in. You think Joshua Fluke's channel is hard to watch for inspiring self-taught dev? It's all the hate. Um, it's definitely not. So, Charles Campbell, what I would tell you is that it's an entertainment channel. I wouldn't, wouldn't necessarily throw it in an education space. Although, I, I'm not saying that you're not going to learn anything. I think I've learned things from watching his channel and, and insights. He's a very intelligent guy who's pointed out quite a few things when he was like, one thing I've learned quite a bit from is from his, like, let's find people a job section, which was something I wasn't expecting. And he really informed me quite well. Um, but what I would say is that a lot of the stuff that he suffered through, if you just took, um, if you just read, um, the clean coder and applied those principles to how he interacts with the business. He'll do much. He'd probably be much happier about his experiences, but everything happens for a reason. He's happy where he's at. <laughs> and I completely understand what's going on. Okay. Last question, which is better framework styled components or CSS preprocessors? They're, they're not the same thing. And you can use a CSS preprocessor in your framework style sheets. Does your work experience with companies and clients contribute to your ability to build quality side projects on your own? You will be as quality of a developer as you put in the time to be. Um, matter of fact, as you work at companies, you might find certain companies bring your quality down. And that's the scariest thing in the world. It's something you should run like hell from. Um, you can continue your skills outside of work and go from there. Do I use HTML uh, processors? No, those are stupid. Uh, <laughs> um, people, uh, so you have things like, uh, for those of you who don't know, you have things like um, styling a component on the component itself in the HTML. No, that's hot garbage too. Um, inline styles should be abandoned at all costs. And what I would say is that if you want to have styles and not put classes or ids and that's fine i encourage you not to i try to avoid classes and ids as much as possible what i do is i just make sure my code is nested properly and it applies to styles i create global style sheets based off the elements you should look into something like atomic design and how you're going to organize your css to make sure it works and it looks nice um, html processors like um was it pub i, f I forget what it is um, PUBG, not PUBG, but um, Pug, Pug, where it's shorthand and you're doing like markdown for your HTML. No, get out of here. Hot garbage. It's a it's a niche skill that got deprecated the second Emmet became popularized. Inline styles are an anti-pattern that should be avoided at all costs. 
There's Dull on there. I want to talk to him. No, we've been we've been going a little longer than usual. Coding phase just sell stuff. Yeah, man. Like, we all just sell stuff. Um, I don't know. I haven't. I haven't. Um, I haven't watched uh, too much coding phase. Yeah, so Emmett solved all the issues. So the reason people use things like Pug and these templating things is because HTML was too hard to type out. It's long. It's lengthy. So it's just Emmett solved all that. You type one thing, you hit tab, and you're good. Yeah, it's it's silly. Yeah, no, it's it's garbage. It's garbage. Anyone who tells you differently is wrong. It's not a matter of an opinion on this. <laughs> so there are certain things that are opinions, without a doubt. We could have an argument about how unit testing and functional testing are good or bad or whatever, um, and you're going to probably be on the side of wrong. But I think that's a conversation we can have. You telling me that there is value in using something like Pug uh, over just doing HTML nowadays, I'm just going to say you're lazy. That's it. That's it. You're lazy. And what has happened is you used that before Emmet existed. And... You didn't want to change because you already learned it. It's that simple. It's the same reason people use jQuery. It's the same reason people um, just hack stuff out. You're lazy. There's plenty of developers who are lazy. Plenty of developers who don't want to learn. It's a it's a dangerous thing. Um, but yeah, no, it's hot garbage. Absolute hot garbage. And like I know a lot of, I know so I know I know Brad at Traverse Media got mad at me once or twice about talking shit on jQuery and on Bootstrap. And stuff like that. Um, and he doesn't like to uh, technology shame. That's fine. And you don't have to do it. But I'm going to tell the people the truth. And it's hot garbage. So some people, may they don't want to do that. Get, pe get people riled up. It's hot garbage. Hot garbage. It's always going to be hot garbage. And it's never going to get any better. And that's why <laughs> if, <laughs> if I... Dude, I swear to God, if I got hired for Google and I opened up the project and and there was a HTML templating thing in there, I'd quit on the spot. I'd be like, clearly there's nothing for me to learn here, and I'd leave. Oh, my God. You heard Josh Fluke is going to interview Dolan in September? You know, I, I, I've been meaning to email him about doing corporate Josh and then Dolan, and we could do, like, an interview. I think it would be pretty funny. Um, what's an alternative to jQuery anyway? JavaScript. Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, what do you need? It, it depends on what you need to do. I So here's the thing. I have no problem with people using jQuery for small applications. The problem is, is that people then always use jQuery. You don't really need to. And if you're going to use a framework and you're going to build a large application that's more than one page or two pages, use a framework because it's going to be, it's going to be faster. It's going to be, have more features. It's going to be, you're going to be able to build components easier in it. Just everything about it is better. jQuery had a time and place and it was about, probably ended about eight years ago, something like that. Around the time AngularJS came out. The death of jQuery was then. And it's been a slow death. And all you've been seeing are people who have refused to learn something new, that refuse to grow, refuse to mature. Now, it's not that hard, people. Nowadays, you can get a 40-hour course on a framework for $9.99 on Udemy. And you can get a free multi-hour course on YouTube or Skillshare. It's that simple. You say, hey, Dylan, how come I can't get a React job? Well, have you, do you know React? I built something. Okay. You think Angular will ever die? Yeah, sure. 
<laughs> it will eventually they all die out um ruby has gone the way of php man why is jquery still used because there's a lot of bad developers who only know jquery yeah yeah Other than convenience and laziness, is React overhyped? I'm not a fan of React. Everyone loves React. I don't understand the appeal. Um, but, I mean, I, I like it better than jQuery. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, people are almost religious with um, React. I like Vue a lot, too. Um, the issue I have with Vue is it's, um, it's hard to test. I don't really like... And they just need to add component decorators. Did they add that? I know they came out with Vue 3. There's a library for that. I, I thought maybe they'd be adding that, but I'm not sure if they did. Um... But yeah, so if I was to recommend, like, hey, I want to get my first entry-level dev job, I'd say React, yeah, because it's very hot. A lot of a lot of people, a lot of jobs in it. All my stuff is on Udemy? Yeah, man. For the most part. Very hot equals very competitive. Not true. Not true at all. Um, very hot means that there's oftentimes a lot of people going for it, but there's a bigger gap than the amount of people going for it. What I think of CELT, I haven't actually had a chance to look at it. It looks like how JavaScript should have been in terms of interacting with the DOM. Um, Thoughts on Indie Hacker. Those guys don't particularly care what technology stack as long as it gets the job done. I don't. So here's the thing. I don't care about the technology stack either, believe it or not. But if the technology stack you choose isn't going to last and isn't going to be able to be have additional features, because the project never ends. This is what you have to understand. A project never ends until a company runs out of money or goes out of business. There will always be additions. There will always be changes. And jQuery is not a scalable item. How's the tech industry in Florida? It's good, man. I got no complaints. Uh, so the main front end uh, tool set is HTML, CSS, JavaScript, um, a framework, Git, testing. You can throw TypeScript in there. TypeScript is something that's um, grown in popularity. All right, guys, we've been going about an hour and a half. Ugh. It's Friday. It's about 8.30 my time. Thank you so much. And thank you to, um, I think it was James who donated $4. I appreciate that, man. Um, thank you so much for that. Help me pay off that house because we broke. We broke, right? Um, um, so with all that being said, um, if you're interested in any of my courses, the 100 front-end interview, technical interview question challenge that you can get for $9.99, going over the 100 most asked front-end questions as well as some tips and tricks in there to help you kill it. It also includes a free um, free Git tutorial and a free tutorial on the solid principles. There is also the 100 algorithm challenge to help you prep for those whiteboard problems. So, whew, excuse me. so with, with all that being said, if that's something you're interested in, um, you can get it for $9.99 in the description below using coupon code CODINGGOD. I'm going to go spend some time with April probably go to bed and then in the morning i'm gonna keep grinding so i'll see you guys next time